Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. Today you join me, I'm in the beautiful coast of Ireland and it's a sad day really because it's the last day that I get to play with this beautiful Canon R5. So like I would have mentioned on a couple of previous episodes, I've been very lucky that Canon have given me an opportunity to try out this camera. But as always, all good things must come to an end. So I decided what I want to do is kind of put my thoughts down on what I think about the camera, the pros to it, the cons to it, and my general thoughts overall and how it suits me from a landscape photography point of view. So one of the first things that I want to talk about is the build quality of this camera. And like all Canon cameras, it's built very, very, very well. But the one thing that I found with it is that it's a small bit bigger than my Canon EOS R. And that's actually a good thing because it's good and comfortable in my hand. It is a mirrorless camera. And then you compare it to the likes of the uh, uh, 5D Mark IV, it's a smaller camera, but it's actually the right size. It fits in my hand nicely. The ergonomics and everything else are good too. Additionally, because I'm a Canon user, the advantage straight away is that I knew my way around the system. Now, granted, there was more menu functions because there's more features within this camera, but I was very quickly able to navigate around the camera and be able to get the shots quickly, like I would do if I was using my own camera. So that's a plus for me in the muscle memory that I've built up by using Canon cameras. Anyway, on top of that, I was very lucky to get two lenses. So I got this lens here, which is the 70-200. to it's a 2.8, it's a phenomenally beautiful lens. Even from the size and the form factor of a 7200 lens, it's quite small. Now, granted, you know, when you're actually using this uh, lens, you've got the form factor here, which is the size, but instead of it actually being something that is contained internally on the old side lenses, it does actually extend out to this size, but that's the maximum size that it can be. But because as well, it falls back into itself, the real estate that it takes in my camera is a lot less. So. It was a really, really good combination and the 2.8 on this lens, the sharpness of this lens, the speed of this lens was absolutely phenomenal too. So overall build quality on this camera is absolutely excellent. Now, when it comes to image quality, the quality of the image of this is absolutely phenomenal. So the image file size is 42 megapixels versus my EOS R, which is a 30 megapixel. And when I did my comparison video, actually, if you haven't seen that, I'll link to that up here, but I couldn't really see a difference when I was looking at it on the screen. However, there is a massive difference in the real estate that the image will take on the screen of my uh, computer when I was processing the images. Plus, when I was zooming in, I could see that there was a lot more detail as well available. So the real test would be to be able to print some of those images to see would there be much of a difference between the two, but as far as image file size goes anyway, it is quite large. It's one of the turn offs for me because it takes up more space from my hard drive. However, the quality of the file is absolutely phenomenal. I also used the camera taking some photographs in the mountains in Killarney, and I was able to zoom right in and see some minute details that I don't think I'd have been able to see if I was using my EOS R. So from an image point of view, it's absolutely tack sharp and the depth of field as well that you get from this lens and with the sensor is a killer combination. Dynamic range as well was really, really good. So I had a couple of images that were very, very bright with dark areas and it was able to handle those as well flawlessly. So having a good quality image makes it much, much easier when you're going to edit the image in post. Next up is video quality and the video quality on this is absolutely immense. Now, I didn't get an opportunity to try 8K, so never got to test, you know, the famous overheating of the R5, but when I did shoot on 4K, it was absolutely beautiful. I actually recorded video, and I sped up the video in one of my last videos to create a time-lapse in moving clouds, and it worked absolutely perfectly. Now, 8K is going to take up a lot of space. You need to get the CF Express card. I didn't have one. And also 4K is also going to take up a lot of space too on your hard drive. But I shoot mainly in 4K anyway, so now it wasn't much of a difference, but incredible quality, incredible image, dynamic range, and the video was really, really buttery smooth. Next up was battery life, and I had no problem whatsoever with battery life. Now, it does take the LP6, uh, so it's a standard Canon battery, so I have enough of those from my 6D, which is able to use on my Canon EOS R, and then also I can use on the EOS R5. However, it does have a higher capacity battery that comes with this camera. So it's an LP6N. And 
that was really, really good. I never really had an issue of it running out of any uh, power for me. No, I always have spare batteries anyway, but it never really was an issue, so I was never really worrying about running out of power. The one thing is that it did take longer right, to charge, but that's going to be natural because it has a higher capacity. So the battery that you get with the R5 is a better battery, and I've never had an issue or a worry uh, of going to run out of power in any of the shoots that I've done while I've had it. Something I have noticed which was phenomenally good on this camera was the speed of the auto focus. Now, my EOS R is quick enough for me because I use it for landscape, but while I had this, I took some photographs as well of the kids and children to move very, very fast, so it's very difficult to be able to get a shot and have the focus go quickly but it was spot on every single time. So if somebody wanted to get this camera from a professional point of view to use it for portraiture or for sport, I think it would be absolutely phenomenal. You have a multitude of focus points as well, so it can pick it up. The tracking as well was very, very good in it also. The autofocus on the eye, even on the animal autofocus, was incredibly good too. So I think there's leaps and bounds of improvements that's come since after I've had my R, but if you're using this from a professional point of view, like I say, for portraiture, I don't think you can go wrong in any way, shape or form. For landscape, for me, I mainly am in manual focus anyway, so it wasn't really applicable, but I do think, you know, overall, that can't be beaten. So yeah, a big tick box and the plus for the autofocus on this camera. So overall, what have I thought of the camera? I think it is phenomenally good. It's expensive. And I think it's more expensive than I would need from a camera system. But if I was to use something professionally that I wanted to be able to have, that I knew that wouldn't let me down, wouldn't miss a trick, and would also be able to hold up to the elements because it's fully water sealed, then I think I could stretch myself because I could justify the cost because I'd be able to make it back for what I'd sell my work for. But I think it's a great uh, addition to the Canon family. It is the flagship camera until the R3 will come out, which is going to be a better camera. And then there's rumors as well, I believe, of an R1, but I don't know at the moment in time. But as far as the R5 goes anyway, it's a really, really good camera. Um, if you have one already, actually, let me know what are your thoughts in relation to the camera? Was I right or was I wrong in my assessments? I'd be really interested to know your thoughts in the comments below. So I'm going to finish up this episode. Thank you very much, as always, for watching. And thanks to Canon Ireland as well for giving me the opportunity to try this camera. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Give me a like, give me a comment. And until the next time, Shlom Gafo.